So what's your artist's Instagram strategy for this year? Are you just winging it, hoping that some of your posts are gonna get results? Well, I've got some news for you. You definitely are gonna get results, and probably not the results that you're really looking for. Did you want growth, engagement, leads, or sales on Instagram this year? Well, make sure to watch this video right to the end. I've got five top tips for you that you're gonna to want to pay close attention to if you want that positive change and great results. Now, in case we haven't met, I'm Sophie, an artist, entrepreneur, and art business coach, helping you to build a successful art business from your creative passion. If you find my videos helpful, then do consider subscribing and giving this video a little thumbs up as well. So here's your artist Instagram strategy for this year, 2023. Number one is get clear on your Instagram goal. Most people flounder about on social media without realizing that in order to get the maximum return on your time invested, you really need to have a clear goal. And of course, a strategy on how you intend to take action on this. Now there are four possible goals that you'll have on Instagram. Number one, to grow your audience and gain more followers. Number two, to gain leads to your mailing list. Number three, to sell your artwork or your art services. And number four, to build engagement on the platform. Now there's no order of preference, it's just how I wrote them down. Each one is totally unique, has a different series of actions that you're gonna be taking on your Instagram account, and of course, a specific outcome. If you're looking to grow your awareness and build more followers, you're gonna take different actions than if you want to make sales and you're very sales focused. Now, of course, in an ideal world, you might say to me, Sophie, I want all four. And I'm gonna to say to you, well, you can have all four, but you need to have a goal on which one you're gonna work on first. So for example, if you're starting out, you might say your initial goal is to get more followers. If you're a little bit further down the track, then you might say, okay, now I want to build my mailing list. So I'm gonna focus on getting leads to my mailing list. Or you might say, well, I've got a sizable following, but my engagement's not as good as it could be. And I know that engagement is ultimately gonna to lead to sales. So I'm gonna focus on my engagement. Or maybe you're a little bit further down altogether. You have plenty of things to sell. You have a growing audience and an engaged audience. And now you want to focus on actually making sales. One of the core mistakes that artists make is trying to sell out of the gate when they've only got a few hundred followers and likely they're not even the right followers and they're not engaged. You've got to build up those stepping stones so that it's easy then when you offer your work for sale. The people are there, they're ready, they're excited, they're waiting and they want to make that purchase. Number two, of course, you want to create a consistent content plan. Once you're clear on that goal, that's gonna help you create a consistent plan and work out what type of content is going to be best. If you're looking to grow your follower base and you want to get your content in front of new eyes, then you're probably gonna use reels. You know, if you want to engage the audience, well then you wanna think about a post that is gonna be asking a question or getting people to engage in a certain way. So you'll be making different choices according to those four types of goals that we set earlier. So really think about, is an image going to do what you need it to do? Perhaps it's a carousel, perhaps it's that reel, or it's a mixture of all of them. Then you need to simply plan out that content that's going to appeal to your audience and tick that goal. Now, if you're not sure who your ideal audience is, then first off, check out this video. That helps you to find out where your audience are. But once we've chosen the audience, the target audience, it's really helpful in terms of writing social media content to drill down and just profile one ideal customer. I have a free worksheet for you that's really gonna help you in this process. It's called my Ideal Customer Avatar Worksheet. You can grab a link to it below this video. Once you've downloaded that, you'll see that there's a few pages and there's a series of questions and each one of them is a different section. You want to fully fill this out. And the top tip here is, because people ask me this all the time, well, how do I know this information, Sophie? You don't, you're going to make it up. This is the ideal customer, all right? You want to speak to your ideal customer. So the profile, you're gonna make it up and so you can fill out that customer. And once you've done that, you have the perfect resource to help you write all your post content and of course, all the descriptions that go with it as well are so important and are gonna build that connection over time with your audience. 
Number three now, you want to get added benefits from SEO. What's SEO? Search engine optimization. Now you might say to me, Sophie, I didn't know that Instagram was a search engine. And I'm gonna to say to you, no, you'd be absolutely correct, it isn't. When we think about Google or YouTube or Pinterest, these are all places that we can go type in um, a word or a phrase and get a series of results. And at this point of time, Instagram doesn't have that capability. However, what it does have, it does pick up on the words and phrases that you use in the videos and in the description. And it uses those to determine how to categorize your content and in turn how that's gonna show up for your audience. So first up, you want to create a list of possible keywords that your content might be found for. And then once you've done that, here's a list of places that you can make sure that those keywords show up when you're using Instagram. So for example, your username. So instead of having your name, first name and last name, you might have first name, last name, art. Just having that word there is gonna help you potentially get found for more content. Your display name, that's the bit that sits underneath your profile picture and shows up really, really big. Now you can change that and usually you put like a little byline in there or some people put some emojis and then they write their name again, which is definitely not a good use of those characters. So think about keywords and think about how you can describe what it is that you offer for your ideal audience and use that space right up to the maximum characters because it is very, very prominent in your bio. You can also use it in the words of your bio as well. And again, sometimes people don't even fill this bit out because they probably don't know what to write. Other people follow the latest trend and write a few hashtags in there, write a few descriptive words. Listen, how you do it is up to you. The most important thing is those few characters you do have, you want to make it very clear on your audience what they will expect to see on your Instagram feed. And if you can use specific words, keywords, paintings, prints, products, um, art services, mural painter, illustrator, words that people might be following and using to find your content, you want to get those in there. Then of course, most importantly, you want to use it in your post descriptions. So having created your image or your carousel or your video, your reel, whatever piece of content you're creating, you then have to write a description. And um, please, please, please think of this as a piece of copy, marketing copy. Occasionally a one-liner is good if it sparks engagement. But the last thing you want to do is put perhaps a picture or a carousel of your latest painting and says, painting ready for sale. If your goal on Instagram is to make more sales, I can guarantee that that is a massive turnoff. You will 100% not make any sales. You need to think about what your audience would like to know about that piece. What inspired you? How did you create it? Why is it titled the way it is? What's the benefit of buying it? How can they buy it? How long will it take for them to receive it? All the things that they might want to know. You're almost thinking about writing almost an entire blog or, a, or an email. The more information you can give them in the description, and this is a great place to have your keywords, the more it's gonna engage the audience, obviously, and the more they're gonna understand and the more likely they are to buy. So having taken the time to create the content, the last thing you wanna do is put a one-liner that doesn't give you any help at all. It's not gonna get you the results that you're looking for. And then of course, you can use your keywords and should use your keywords in the hashtags. You can use up to 30 hashtags, and if you're new, your account is fairly new, you want to use all 30 to, again, help you get found. So make sure the hashtags are relevant. So if you've got a picture of a painting, then make sure it's got all the keywords that are related to that painting, um, rather than putting a descriptor about yourself or something completely random, because Instagram will not know how to rank that piece of content. It's like, here's the image, here's the description, here are the hashtags. And if the hashtags don't relate to the other two things, then you're gonna be downgraded and you don't want that. Number four, stay focused and take action. Okay, so it's one thing to set a goal, to create a content plan, a strategy of how you're gonna make the goal work, and it's a whole other one to stick to it, right? Now, if you've said that your goal is to sell artwork 
and all you do is post random shots of you in the studio or you using your materials, then you're wasting your time and you're wasting the posts. Sure, they might get some engagement, but that's not your goal, right? They might get some likes. People might really enjoy seeing that, but if your goal is to make sales, then you need to be using sales type of posts and content so that your audience will actually move towards making that decision and making a purchase with you. Okay, so here's a few things you can do. You want to start by establishing your authority. So why not create a pinned post that stays at the top of your feed and actually a bit of a describer, who you are as an artist, what's your experience, your background, where have you exhibited, where can people find out more about you. So actually build out that authority piece so people straight away can go and find out about you as an artist. Next, you want to be posting about your products with a clear call to action, the descriptor of what the products are, how they're gonna benefit you as an audience, but most importantly, that clear call to action of how they can buy that and buy that right now. You can use your little Instagram highlights to categorize the different products, for example. So you might have one category that's got original work, um, limited edition prints, downloadables, products, special offers. Again, if your goal is to sell, then we want to make that very evident on your profile. Now, what I'm not saying is that you want to be pushing sales content down your audience's throats. What I am saying is you want to feel okay and very clear that your work is for sale and here's how to go get it. There's a real difference between buy this, buy this, buy this. You might be cold audience, you might not know who I am, but buy this, buy this. All right, that's not what we're talking about at all. What we're talking about is actually structuring your Instagram account so that people can see you're a working artist and you have these things for sale and here's where they go to buy them. So number five, you want to be prepared for change. Now, this really is across the board with running a business and specifically an art business, but right here we're talking about Instagram. Now, love it as we do, we know that Instagram is always changing, right? You're always seeing someone's new video, the algorithm has changed, Instagram's done it again. Like they're constantly looking to improve things. So you've got two options here. One is you can say, I've got a strategy for the year, I'm just gonna stick with my strategy and see what happens. Or you can say, I realize that it's a changing platform, I'm gonna stay on top of what's happening so that I can make sure to utilize the changes as best as possible. How are you gonna do this? Well, number one, you want to follow the actual Instagram account. And number two, you know, read their blog because they are forever putting out any new change, any new update, any new feature, so that you can get that information ahead of time and think about how you might use that or how you might change your Instagram marketing strategy as you move forwards. So there you have it, five top tips for your artist's Instagram strategy for 2023. Now, if you've loved this content, don't forget there's a couple of videos that you might find really helpful right now if you haven't watched them. The first one is three steps for social media content planning. All right, super useful for a very simple way for you to come up with lots of content. And the second one is all about repurposing how you can create up to 90 or more than 90 posts just starting with one piece of content. So these are all gonna help you in terms of coming up with what you can talk about. The caveat here, make sure that you're staying in line with the goal that you set. So remember, you're gonna set a goal where you're either going to be looking to grow your followers or you're gonna be looking to grow that mailing list, make sales, or of course, build engagement. And ultimately, as you move forward, you definitely want all four. But for right now, you're just gonna do one at a time. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as I say, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every single week. And the one that's on screen right now, ready for you to watch as those three steps to social media content creation. So enjoy that and I'll see you on another one.